Hey everyone, today I'm going to be uh, starting a series that I'm going to do with this handgun here. This is a Gen 3 Glock 19 that comes from the factory suppressor ready, so it's got suppressor sights and a threaded barrel. And uh, it, by the way, it does not include this Surefire XC1 that was added by the owner. And basically what I'm going to be doing is a modification series where I go through a lot of the stuff that I've already done videos on, uh, but this time you'll be able to see from start to finish exactly what the process is. Once um, I complete the whole series, I'm going to go ahead and put links to all the different parts of it um, on this video so you can go to each of them. Um, but just as a brief overview of as of now what I'm going to be doing to it, I'm going to be doing the um, mag release scallop to make it a little bit easier to get to on this Gen 3 Glock. I'm going to be doing a full stippling job around the entire grip as well as reference points up here on the front uh, for the offhand. I'm going to be undercutting the trigger guard back here as well as doing an undercut about halfway down on the trigger for a reference point for your support hand. And then the owner of this has yet to decide whether or not he actually wants me to take all the finger grooves off, uh, but that's something I can easily do after the fact, as well as maybe even doing a little scallop at the magazine well in order to aid in uh, getting rid of stuck magazines. Now some of the other things that the owner may end up doing is he may end up swapping out the trigger, um, he might swap out the, the slide lock. If, if he does do those things, if he has me do those things for him, then I'll go ahead and film those as well, uh, just to kind of complete this whole series. So unless he has me swap out springs or anything like that, I won't be doing anything to the slide. It, this will all be to the frame itself. Now the nice thing about learning how to do framework yourself is this is the serially controlled item. So if you want to ship this to someone to have them do it, then you have to start worrying about FFLs and all that stuff. Uh, it can get kind of expensive. So I'm a big fan of learning how to do things yourself. Now, just as a disclaimer, anything that I show how to do in these in this series, uh, you know, take it on at your own risk. If you damage this lower uh, and make it inoperable, you have to spend a couple hundred bucks and buy a whole new frame for your Glock. So keep that in mind before you get into this. Um, I highly recommend practicing on something like an old P-Mag for Magpul or an old AR grip, something that's going to be a similar polymer so you can kind of get the feel for it, see how it's going to react uh, before you actually start permanently modifying your handguns. So for this video, uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start by taking out the scallop for this magazine release. Uh, the reason I want to do that first is um, if I stipple first and then I cut into that stippling, then I'm going to have to clean up the stippling afterward like in my old, um, my original magazine scallop video. So by doing that first, then I'll be able to cover up um, the rest of it with st uh, stippling without having to worry about messing up that stippling. So basically what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to completely disassemble this lower, um, especially taking out that magazine release, so I can very easily grind this down without having to worry about doing any damage to any of the accessories um, like the magazine release itself. So I'm um, obviously going to make sure it's clear. And then um, if you have the Glock tool, that comes in really handy, um, but I've even used Leatherman's before as long as you have something uh, small and pointy. Take out this pin, which kind of jiggle around on that slide lock. It'll usually make that come out a little bit easier. Take out this top pin. Take out this back pin for the trigger assembly. At this point I can remove the locking block and the slide lock. And then at this point the whole trigger assembly should just lift out just like that. Now one thing I'm also going to do, because I don't feel like damaging a $300 flashlight, I'm also going to take this uh, Surefire XC1 off as well. So let me grab my overly uh, oversized screwdriver and remove this guy. So cool little light, um, but I'll be doing a video on this in the future if you're interested. So uh, now that I got this, uh, all the rest of the parts out, I'm going to take out the magazine release. So in order to do that, I have one of these little hook uh, picks from uh, Husky. I'm just going to reach in down there. I don't know how well you can see that with the, the lighting I have set up. But there's a little, basically a little prong in there that retains that magazine release on. So kind of hard to do behind a camera. But once you pop that out, then you can just pull the magazine release straight out like that. 
And at this point, we are pretty much ready to work. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna take uh, some blue painter's tape, like in my last video, and basically mark out the rough area uh, that I wanna uh, go for. And then I'm also gonna to wanna to make sure that I grind off this little thumb ramp. Because you'll notice, if you've ever felt a Gen 3 uh, Glock, or any of the older version Glocks, and you have short thumbs like I do, you, you find that that bump really gets in the way of being able to adequately reach that magazine release. And I can say that doing the scallop makes a huge difference as far as the ease of actually getting on that uh, magazine release without having to get an extended one, which can very easily be bumped if you're concealed carrying or doing anything like that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, basically pause this real quick, get it taped up, and then we will commence accordingly. All right, so as you can see, I've got it more or less taped out, the kind of contour that I want to go for. Um, you know, this, it'll be subject to change. Um, you know, I just, this is going to be a rough guide. And then just as a note, I'm going to be using a Dremel um, with a large sanding drum first just to get most of the material off. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go down to one of these smaller sanding drums just to get a nice uh, edge on both sides of there just to kind of texture a little bit and then I'll probably be polishing it up with some other ones uh, but I'll talk more about that once I get to that point. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reposition my camera so I can actually uh, see what I'm doing while I'm working on this and uh, not mess this up. Uh, so go ahead and reposition it and then we will go ahead and get started with the uh, dremeling. Alright so if I start bumping the camera um, I apologize but basically like I said what I'm going to be doing is just taking the sanding drum. I'm going to work down this whole bump right here and then I'm going to work my way into this actual magazine release. The biggest thing to be careful of here is you only have so much thickness to work with before you actually breach into the magazine well. So it's better to take off less material, do a fit test, see how it feels, um, and then take off a little bit more material at a time instead of just trying to go gung-ho and then next thing you know you breach into your magazine well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started with this. I'll do my best to try to keep it in view of the camera. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so at this point, pretty much got that bump nice and taken care of, and then I'm going to start actually working on the spot where it actually hits the magazine release. Alright, so I can already tell that's going to make a huge difference, uh, just that in and of itself. Um, just going to keep working it out just a little bit here. Alright, so I can already tell that's going to make a huge difference, so what I'm going to do now Swap down to the smaller sanding drum, uh, finish up these edges a little bit, and then I'm going to come through and polish it. All 
All right, so at this point, um, I think I'm pretty much good as far as the material I'm gonna take off. Uh, I don't know how well you can see the contour that I have there, uh, but at this point, I'm just gonna come through uh, with a polishing drum and polish this up, and hopefully we should be more or less good to go. Alright, so I don't know how well you can uh, see the polishing here, uh, but I think really that's that's pretty much exactly where I need it to be. Um, and then when I stipple around, basically going to outline that, and it will should be good to go. So what I'm going to do is just do a confirmation test fit, make sure it works exactly how I want it to, and then, uh, yeah, we'll be good to go with this. Alright, so as you can see, there's a lot more standoff there between the magazine release and the back of that. So that's going to make it significantly easier to get to that magazine release. So at this point, uh, I can take off the tape and we should be good to go. Now as far as the burrs there, uh, you can either go through with sandpaper or something like that and smooth that out. But since I have more work to be done, I'm just going to wait until the end and do all the polishing uh, at the end. But uh, really, that's, that's most of what you need to know as far as how to scallop a magazine release.